If you're thinking about starting surfing or you're new to surfing, then stay tuned because in this video, we're gonna break surfing down into seven simple steps. Just loading out the van, heading to the beach in a second. We'll see you there. Clay is a surf coach who doesn't teach surfing by surfing, do you? No, I teach everyday life skills like walking, passing coffee cups. A lot of people when they, I think when they very first get into surfing, they go, they want to go straight for a board that is like this one here. Yeah, you know why? They think if they get a magic carpet, they're going to surf better. So think of boards like bicycles. This here, throw it down. That's Lance Armstrong's Tour de France, 100 miles an hour down a hill bicycle. Okay. Right, but if you're learning how to ride a bicycle, you almost want to be this one that has training wheels. That's so the pink one. Going to help you balance. Okay. Okay. The shorter one means that it's going to turn better, but ultimately, you're just trying to stand on an unstable surface and balance at first. Yeah. Once that kid on a bicycle's got balance, then he can learn how to turn. Okay. So as soon as you figure out balance, figure out turning, then go 100 miles an hour and turn. Okay, so someone who's just starting surfing, they're a beginner, go for a big, I mean, is, it, is a soft top probably the best option to go for? Well, the thing is, you're not gonna have the paddle strength. Right. Okay, so you haven't got the fitness and the technique. So that's gonna be easy to catch waves. A, because it's longer. B, because it's thicker, which means it floats easier and yep. paddles better and C, because it's wider, it's more stable. Okay. There's three reasons there for riding a longer one. Yeah. And so this is this is an, an eight foot soft top, getting from most of your standard surf shops will sell something along those lines there. The next yeah. thing that we're obviously gonna need is, is a leash. So the leash is the piece of equipment that goes around your ankle that connects yep. you to the board. You simply pop the tail saver around the string and your leash is done. You want this piece to stand out to the side so that when your foot is on the board, okay, you don't stand on the leash. Because if it's around, say, this side, for example, it's a very good chance you may stand on it. You never put your leash on the front leg because again, if you stand on that, you're probably gonna get this leash like wrapped between your toes and it's just like really uncomfortable when you stand on it. How do we find out if we're just getting into surfing? How do we find out which is our front or our back foot? Is there, a, is there a simple test that we can do? Yes, okay, so a simple test. If you're gonna kick a soccer ball, you balance on your front leg and you kick with the back. So the leg that you kick with is your back leg. The final piece of equipment that you might need, depending upon whereabouts you are surfing in the world, is a wetsuit. Clayton doesn't like the cold, so he's wearing a wetsuit. Now there are so many different kinds of breaks. You've got waves that are really dumpy, you've got waves that are nice and slow and mellow and come in. When we are just getting into surfing, what are the sort of beaches or what are the sort of waves that, that we're looking for? So the ocean floor that has a shallower gradient, in other words, not too steep, the waves are going to roll slowly and they're going to break gently, yeah. which is kind of what we're looking for. But something with a very steep gradient is going to come from deep water and then quickly hit a steep gradient and pitch. Yep. So we want slower rolling waves. Another way that you've said is a really good way of, of identifying a good beach to learn to surf on is to look for other surf schools because they are specifically teaching out those beaches because they are good learner waves. 100%. So at the moment, way down the beach over there, we've got two surf schools. There's a lifeguard in Tower 13. So if anything does go wrong, I'll wave my arms, the lifeguard's there. But what's even better is to always just go surfing with the mate, double up with yeah. the mate, so that uh, not only from the, surf, the surfing aspect, but you can also coach each other in the water. Good. This is about creating some drills on land before you actually get in the water so you know how to get up onto the board. I want you to stand here with your legs like this, like a crab, and try to run like a crab. And I will stand this way, 
and on the count of three, we're just going to run five steps. You ready? Okay. One, two, three, go. So who moves better? Well, you move better. Okay, so when you're on the board, please don't stand like a crab. You can't move well. All you do is you wobble more. Okay, so Ant, the most important thing is to look where you're going. So look at me. Now do a real high push-up. Arch your back higher, straighten your arms. All right. Now that is like riding your bicycle and you've got steering. You can steer left, you can steer right, just by adding some pressure to it. Okay? Now what I want you to do is to make a triangle. So you take your back foot, so think of a triangle, a really long one, like that, and then a shorter triangle like this. So what I would like you to do is from that position, go into a triangle like that. Okay, now simply walk your front, your back foot forward, lift your hands and walk up. That's it, that's your walk up mate. And so whereabouts on the board do I need to be laying? Because I feel like I'm far forwards here. So you almost want to lie about a full arm's length of the nose. So pushing on the board? Yep. So there. the first thing you do is you, you do a push up, make a triangle, walk through. That's it. Okay. Now when you do stand up, think about riding a bicycle. Try to keep your handlebars level. If you drop one, you'll turn right. If you drop one, you'll turn left. If you wobble them, you're telling your surfboard, go left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay. And the board's going to be really confused. So, big pop-up. Okay, so his feet are almost pointing in two different directions. This hand's over here and it's kind of, this makes you wobble. But as soon as you get front on, it locks the hips. That takes the wobble out of the board. But when you side on, your hips tend to wobble and your head drops. That makes you heavy. So you want to get in that front on position. When getting in the water, be mindful of the people around you and the length of the board. Never walk to the beach dragging the nose across the sand. It could damage the equipment. When walking out, try not to use your finger to pull the board out to sea. This could severely damage your finger and rip the skin off. It's really easy to get tripped up in your leggy while walking down to the beach. So try to scoop it up in your hand and then walk down to the beach. For a safety aspect and also to easier catch waves, Try to always be waist deep in the water. That way if you get fatigued you can always just stand up and walk in. When the wave comes, you want to do the Oreo biscuit, so lean back and glide into your waves. Something that we haven't mentioned is the safety aspect. So we got to look at the strike zone. So if we are boxing, this is my strike zone that I can hit you. Yep. What's the board strike zone? In other words, where, yeah. where can you fall off and still be in a safety zone without hurting someone? Yeah. So do me a favor, go stand by the front of that board. That is your kill zone. Anywhere within that, you're going to annihilate and kill someone. You're going to ride them over, they're going to get damaged. So, Make sure that when you're catching your wave, you've got an idea of that radius so that when you fall off, you're not around someone where you can hurt them. In this example, we put a weight on the front of the board and you see the wave lifts the board and flips it. So here we go again for the second time. The nose digs and the tail wants to flip. And you can see with the lady, the same thing happens. But if you put some weight on the back, and now we call this the Oreo biscuit, it pulls the nose out, it anchors the fins, and the board is allowed to go in a straight line, and it's well balanced. This is super important in surfing. 
Here's a lady that's new to surfing. Her paddle stroke is weak and her timing's off and there's no Oreo biscuit so she misses the wave. With Ant, he waits for the wave, his timing's on point, he glides into it, he stacks and arches and he leans into the wave and it's so much easier catching waves with this technique. When learning how to catch waves, the timing's really important. But also, whenever the foam hits you, you need to brace for the impact. So the lady, she doesn't brace, she's not looking, she's actually looking down and she falls off. Now if you watch Ant, when he catches the wave, the foam becomes towards him, he braces on the impact, he arches his back, he's looking where he's going and he's steering by leaning into the turns. Ant exhibits really good technique and good control. When catching waves, a lot of people over paddle and the timing's off. The second thing they do wrong is by keeping their chin low, when the wave comes towards them, it lifts the tail up and causes them to nose dive. In the example of Ant catching a wave, he doesn't even paddle, he arches his back and because the tail is in the water and the wave can't lift the tail up, the wave then pushes him forward and you see a non-paddle takeoff that looks effortless. A lot of people make the mistake of sprint paddling into the wave and almost wheel spinning and just pulling water and getting no traction. It's not necessary. When the wave breaks, it first lifts the tail up. When you feel this feeling, if you arch your back and glide in for a few seconds, it'll make your pop-up so much smoother. In order to stack Jenga blocks, you want to stack them vertically on top of each other and then they'll have great balance. If you bend a Jenga block and try to put another one on top, it's just going to collapse. So in surfing, by having our back straight, we'll have fantastic balance. But if you bend our backs over, it's going to cause us to wobble and fall off. Once up and riding, surfing is similar to riding a bicycle. Look where you want to go and point the hands. Because you are surfing in towards shallow sand, never dive off your board. It's always a good idea just to lean over and fall over backwards and gently into the water. When coming up from a fall, always try to cover your head because you don't know where your surfboard is or where your fins are. Guys, so I hope you enjoyed that session. I hope that you now understand the seven steps to surfing. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do also hit that notification bell. We're gonna go off, get showered, head back and have some lunch. Do you want me to press the button? No, no, that's